Hello and welcome back to the operations research course. This week we are going to talk about sensitivity analysis. To start this topic we are going to look at a simple linear programming problem that has only two variables such that we may draw the um, feasible region and optimal solution of the problem graphically and then we will visually see how we may perform the sensitivity analysis on that problem. So let's start. So let's use the example of the Giappetto problem that we've seen in the linear programming topic. So this problem has only two decision variables. X1 is the number of soldiers produced per week and X2 is the number of trains that Giappetto produces per week. It has three constraints um, regarding finishing hours, carpentry hours, and the demand of the soldiers. So um, because we only have two variables, we may graphically um, plot the feasible region and then we see that the optimal solution for this problem is at point B. We're going to talk about gradients. So to refresh your memory about gradients, let me ask you some review questions. So we have two lines here. The one is the blue solid line and the other is the red dashed line. Which line has the more positive gradient? I will give you a pause on the video so you will have the time to think about the answer and then I will return after the pause. So the answer is the blue line has the more positive gradient. You can think of the blue solid line, for example, is the equation of y equals 5 times x. While the red dashed line, um, you may think of it, let's say, as y equals 1 third times x. So visually, we may conclude that a line with the more positive gradient is the steeper line. On the other hand, the line with the gradient that is less positive or closer to zero is the flatter line. Similarly, now let me ask you which line has the more negative gradient? Again, we have one blue solid line and another red dashed line. I will give you a pause on this video and then I will return after the pause. The answer is again the solid blue line has the more negative gradient. You may think of the blue line as the equation of y equals minus 7 times x, while the dashed red line, let's say it is y equals negative x. So visually, we may again conclude that a line with the more negative gradient is steeper. Another line closer to zero or with less negative gradient is flatter. So here the blue line is steeper, the dashed red line is flatter. In sensitive analysis, we're going to look at the effect when a parameter in our original problem changes. So let's start uh, by looking at what happens when there is a change in the objective function coefficient. Specifically, we are going to look at the effect on our current optimal solution. In the example of Giappetto problem, this is the current feasible region and the optimal solution is at point B. Now, let's see what happens if we change the price of the soldier, which is currently 3 dollars per unit of soldier train and then we're going to look at the effect when we change the price of a soldier toy so if you look at the feasible region and all the constraints and everything when you change that number uh, three dollars the only thing that uh, will change is the isoprofit line right because the constraints you 
don't do um, any changes to the constraints so all the constraints should remain the same you do not change any value of the right hand side you do not change any parameters of the constraint so um, the feasible region should stay the same the only thing that will change by changing the price of the soldier is the ISO profit line so let's see how we uh, obtain the ISO profit line if you recall that uh, we get the uh, ISO profit line by saying that 3x1 plus 2x2, the objective function, equals a constant. Usually you will get this constant by plugging in some value of x1 and x2 in the feasible region. So if we rearrange this um, equation, we will get um, this uh, equation saying that x2 equals minus 3 over 2x1 plus constant divided by 2. So in other words, we can see that the gradient of the isoprofit line is minus 3 over 2, where 3 currently is the price of the soldier. Okay, so the gradient of this line is minus 3 over 2, where the number 3 comes from the price of the soldier okay so we have seen that if we change the price of the soldier the effect would happen on the ISO profit line now the question that we'd like to answer actually is what value of soldier price that keeps the current basis optimal basis means the set of basic variables so we've seen that our optimal solution is at point B, and then there are basic variables that correspond to that point. Uh, we would like to answer what value of soldier price that keeps those basic variables in our current basis, they remain optimal. To answer that question, now we are going to imagine what happens if the isoprofit line is much flatter or much steeper than the original one? So let's start by looking at if the isoprofit line is flatter. So it's very flat like this red dash line here. It's very flat and then um, if this is our isoprofit line, then you can see that the optimal point changes right because in the maximization case you will drag this iso profit line as far as possible until until it touches a point that is um, the most farther so it gives you um, the maximum point so let's try to drag this um, line so we drag this up and then the last point that we touch before we leave the feasible region is point A. So the conclusion is that if the isoprofit line is flatter than the original one is very flat like this, the optimal point will change from B to A. Now let's see another scenario. If the isoprofit line is very steep, so something that looks like that, so the red dashed line here is very steep, such that if we drag this new isoprofit line, we can see that the optimal point will change as well. So we drag that as far as possible, and then the last point that we touch before we leave the feasible region is point C. So if the isoprofit line is very steep, the optimal point will change from B to C. Now you can see that whether the isoprofit line is uh, too flat or too steep, the optimal point will change either from B to A or B to C. Now let's make our description more specific. So if our isoprofit line is flatter, but how flat? Well, it has to be flatter than this line. 
the A, B, D line, right? Or in other words, it has to be flatter than carpentry constraint. If it's not, then the optimal solution will always stay in B point, right? If it is flatter than this carpentry constraint, like this red dash line, then it will change to A. Similarly, um, for the steeper one, we can say that if the isoprofit line is steeper than this, BC, what is BC? BC is the finishing constraint. So now we can say more specifically that if the isoprofit line is steeper than the finishing constraint, then our optimal solution or our optimal basis will change from B to C. So now we have the boundary, the exact boundary, saying that if the isoprofit line is flatter than carpentry or steeper than finishing, then the optimal basis will change. So from the previous slide, we've seen that the boundaries are flatter than carpentry, steeper than finishing then uh, the optimal basis will change. Now, let's go back to see that this is our current isoprofit. So, um, and we get this result with C1 or the price of the soldiers equals three. So this is our current isoprofit with the gradient of minus three over two. And then if we replace this number three by a general notation C1, we can say that the gradient is minus C1 over two, where if C1 equals three, this is the line. Okay, but in general, the gradient is minus C1 over two. Now our boundary says, if isoprofit line is flatter than carpentry, steeper than finishing. So in terms of gradient, what does this uh, mean actually? Well, we can say flatter than carpentry. The gradient of carpentry is minus one. So we want to be flatter than this. Flatter than this, remember that um, when you have negative gradients, Flatter means closer to zero. So closer to zero means you need to be greater than minus one, right? So greater than minus one means you can have, let's say minus 0 0.9, minus 0 0.8, minus 0 0.13 or whatever. They are all greater than minus one. Now for the word steeper than finishing, Finishing constraint has a gradient of minus two. If we want to have a line that is steeper than that, it means that our isoprofit gradient must be less than minus two. So it can be minus 2.7, minus three, minus 7.16, minus 10 or whatever. They are all less than minus two. Okay, so we know that flatter than carpentry means our isoprofit gradient must be greater than minus one. Steeper than finishing means our isoprofit gradient must be less than minus two. Now let's substitute the uh, isoprofit gradient with this minus C1 over two, because we know that the gradient of our isoprofit line is minus C1 over two. So for the first inequality, minus C1 over two must be greater than minus one. So we solve this uh, inequality, we get this uh, result, C1 must be less than or two. And then for the second constraint, we solve the inequality, we get the result as C1 greater than four. So what does this mean? This means that if C1 is less than two, the isoprofit line will be flatter than carpentry, and then the optimal solution will jump from B to A. If C1 is greater than four, our isoprofit line will be steeper than finishing, and our optimal basis will change from B 
to C. Now, remember that the question we'd like to answer is, the current basis does not change when what? So based on the previous result, when we see that um, these things will make the current basis change, so we may conclude that the optimal basis, the current optimal basis does not change when C1 is between 2 and 4, including 2 and including 4. In other words, when the price of the soldier is between 2 and 4, including 2, including 4, our current basis remains optimal. So B is still optimal. In other words, the current basis with the basic variables x1, x2, and s3 with these values, they all remain optimal. So as long as the price of the soldier is between $2 up to $4, these um, optimal solutions remain optimal. However, uh, you should notice that even though the current basis remains optimal, the Z value will change, which is logical, right? Even though you produce uh, the same number of soldier, the same number of train, if the price of the soldier changes, then your revenue will change as well, right? So um, let's say if uh, C1 equals 3, which is the current um, price for the soldier, $3, your total revenue is $180. If it goes up to 4, then your Z value will go up to 200 as well. Although this solution remains optimal, your total revenue changes. Again, as I said before, because the price of the soldier changes, even though you produce the same number of soldiers. Similarly, if it goes down to $2.5, uh, the current optimal solution is still optimal, but your total revenue changes to $170. So we have seen how we may see graphically that um, the change in the uh, price of the soldier may change the current optimal basis. And then to answer what value of the soldier that uh, the current basis remains optimal, the answer is between $2 up to $4, including $2 and including $4. So that's the end of the first part. In the next one, we're going to look at the effect on changing the value of the right-hand side of the constraints. So see you in the next one. Thank you.